Hey guys, Mars Thing here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan battle video. So I posted yesterday on Twitter and on the community tab that I'm going to start doing a series where I answer your guys' questions about Super Battle Road, hopefully to give you some advice, some tips, based on my multitude of experience, you know, Super Battle Road King and everything. So not a lot going on for Super Battle Road, at least on Global at the moment. So I thought this would be a good idea. A lot of you have said you want some more videos with interaction with you guys. So I thought something like this would be a good way to start. So each week I'm going to post on Twitter and on the community tab. Make sure you ask any questions. Feel free to ask them in the comments for this video as well. But be aware, I'll probably only do one episode a week. So if you ask a question in the comment section of this video, it's not going to make it in until the next video. So without further ado, let's jump in and answer some of your Super Battle Road questions. Okay, so for the first question, shout out to Patrick Daub. Uh, we have, for the type stages, is there strategy as to which enemy you take out first? Are there certain enemies that hit harder and need to be focused on first? Okay, so for the type stages, um, there is a very specific kind of strategy. Um, let us, in fact, bring up the Super Battle Road on the wiki here and uh, go through this. So, you can see here, this is the uh, mono stages, uh, super or extreme. Uh, the list of fights is exactly the same for all the types, so we only really need to look at the top two. So, for almost every single one of the fights, the way you want to focus on taking out the enemies is by going from right to left. So, in this first fight here, Raditz is the weakest, Nappa and then Vegeta. Uh, the dual fights are often very similar. Uh, like the androids and the um, crane hermit and Tau. I'm not sure if there is a huge amount of difference between them. Uh, but obviously when there's two, uh, it's not so much of a big issue. But Ginyu Force is the same, like weakest from right to left. Freezer, Zarbon and Dodoria. Freezer and King Cold. Teles Army, Cooler. In fact, for the super types, I think these are actually all the same. Yeah, so these are all the enemies you fight on the different stages for Super, and it is always right to left. The only one that changes slightly is when you're doing the extreme type stages. So as you can see here, on the uh, if you get Hercule, Videl, and Boo as the first fight, Boo is actually the one with the most HP. Um, I think it goes from left to right, so you want to focus on stunning or sealing Boo and then killing Hercule or Videl as quickly as possible. Uh, the duo fights, I think they could be the same, like Piccolo and Gotenks. I think Gotenks has slightly more HP than Piccolo, but for the dual fights, I don't think it's as important. And for Extreme, obviously, you always fight two characters in Fight 2 and 3. Whereas, as you can see, for Super, there is a different variation of the number of enemies you can fight. Um, and then when you get to the fourth fight, this is the other one that can uh, be slightly different. You've got the Family Kamehameha Trio and the Goku, Vegeta and Piccolo. That one works the same way right to left. But if you get this fight, Super Saiyan 3, Goku, Gohan, Goten, Vegeta and Trunks, it, I believe it actually goes Goku and then Vegeta and then Gohan. Um, or even if it goes Goku, Gohan and then Vegeta, even though Vegeta is kind of in the middle off to the end here, he has more HP than the Goten and the Trunks. So in this fight in particular, if you want to whittle down the enemies as quickly as possible, you want to aim for Goten and Trunks first. So there you go. Normally it is right to left, but there are a couple of exceptions that we went over here. The next question is over from the YouTube community comments, uh, and it is from Nick Venio. I feel like I'm going to butcher a lot of people's last names when I do this series, but <laughs> sorry about that. But he asks, just how necessary is physical LR Ginyu for the Super Battle Road? So the good thing is, whilst the physical LR Ginyu is really, really good for that stage, like he, he helps out a huge amount, it's, you know, undeniable. But the stage is completely possible to do without him. In fact, I'll put up on the screen uh, just the thumbnail. Uh, I did actually do a video beating the stage without him just to show people that it could be done so i will put that link down below in the description uh, i'm not going to go into the full like strategy of you know how you should run your rotations and all of that stuff here because that will be in that video so all you need to know is that it is completely possible and feel free to check out the link to the video in the description if you want to see that run being done without the physical lr in you 
Okay, so next question we have any tips on beating Super Int uh, ESBR without the booze? Okay, so yeah, Extreme Physical versus Super Int. So let us uh, flick over to the wiki page again here. Uh, got the Extreme Physical page up. So basically, you got a couple of options for leaders uh, in, a, in order to get a decent leader skill. Uh, obviously, Cooler gives a 120. Uh, Goku Black after his easy A gives a 120. Um, it is possible to make a full full power or movie bosses team uh, if you have this Broly, but a lot of the units are not going to be super tanky, so it's not necessarily the best build if you are missing certain units. Um, but some of these units are obviously going to be super useful. Uh, if you have the new Angel Freezer, he's insanely good for Super Battle Road. Um, so he's going to be a very solid unit on the team. Cooler can still be good. Obviously, we're waiting for his easy A for him to really soar back to the top of the meta, but he can be very useful. Um, the Goku Black is really, really good. Um, if you don't have access to any of the boos and you are just running a full 120, um, if you can, like if you have friends that play the game or you can post in groups or forums or something, uh, running double Goku Black leads can actually be really useful. Um, because not only does he give key to the allies if you're on global, um, he does lower attack with his super, uh, which is something that is very, very useful in Super Battle Road anyway. So that can be very good. And then obviously depending on the LRs that you have, like Cell is obviously very, very good for Super Battle Road because you can just AoE and clear out most of the field. Um, Broly AoEs obviously isn't quite as powerful, but it's still very good. Um, the LR Broly Trio, if you have them, they can be interesting, but because their passive relies on a lot of sort of RNG of how the turn sort of plays out with the orbs, it might be a little bit difficult to fully rely on them, but they can definitely be very strong as well. Uh, Kumba is really good. If you're someone who has actually summoned on the Heroes banner, again, it's very RNG related, but if his passive goes off after he takes like the first hit of the turn, it just stuns all the enemies for the whole turn, and then that gives you a chance to work away at them uh, without taking any more damage. It is only for that turn, but if you put him in slot 1 and it goes off, then you're not going to take damage basically for the rest of the turn. So you're able to uh, chip away at the enemy without having to worry about dying. Omega can be okay. His defense on its own isn't that good. But he does debuff the enemy's attack slightly. So just him being on rotation means that you're going to take slightly less damage. Um, and then if we scroll down the tier list. Obviously if you have some of the boos, they're always really good to include here. Um, I'm trying to look for some really standout ones. There's a couple of good free to play. Uh, obviously the easy A second fall freezer because he AoEs can be very useful. Um, funnily enough he's going to be super low on the tier list I'm sure. But the... Uh, here you go, the free to play Evil Boo, he seals, he debuffs the enemy's attack with his passive, and he has a built in dodge, so he's really useful. I used him on the OG, like extreme physical no items run before Extreme Super Battle Road. And then the same with King Cold, even though he is gonna take a lot of damage if he gets hit, he lowers the enemy's attack just by being on rotation, as well as lowering the enemy's attack with his super attack. So there are a bunch of units that you can use that have really good passives or abilities that can help you get through the stage. Um, obviously, with the lower leader skill of potentially having to run double 120 leads, you are going to have to use a lot of items. Um, you probably will have to use all eight items, but you should be able to get through uh, using those units. Okay, so another question that comes to us from the YouTube side is from Orin Faran that says, How to know items Super Saiyan 3 Super Battle Road? So, obviously, I do have a video for that up on the channel. Uh, again, I'll put the link to that down in the description. Um, I'll try and remember to do that. Anytime we mention a video uh, that exists is as part of the answer to the questions, I'll put those in a link down below. But... That video was made a long time ago and the category has definitely had some updates that could make it a little bit easier. So let's go over to the wiki view again here and have a look at Super Saiyan 3. So there's a couple of standout units that will make the run a lot easier. 
Um, LR Super Saiyan 3 Goku is actually really good. Now, obviously, since the Link level update, they've made it harder to get his 18 key super. But during the no items run that I did, I didn't go for his 18 key super that much because obviously he loses all of his defense. Well, not all of it, but a lot of it after 18 key supering. Plus, on his 12 key super, he does actually have the chance to stun. So, because Super Saiyan 3 is one of the older category stages, it's not quite at the same difficulty level of the newer ones. So, if you're getting just the 12 key super, this Goku can actually tank basically for double digits. Um, especially if he's getting hit with type advantage. Type disadvantage will still do a little bit of damage to him. Um, but, obviously he's very, very good at tanking. And then, of course, if you do get the opportunity where you can put him in a slot and he's not taking attacks after his attack... Then you can go for the 18 key super to deal devastating damage, which is really good. Uh, the heroes units definitely play a big part. Um, super Saiyan 3 Trunks is very good defensively. Uh, he does have an RNG related uh, defense passive, but he does also stack defense for multiple turns with his super attack. So he can be very good. And then of course the Xeno Goku as well. Um, very good. Gets better with more heroes units on the team as well. So if you are running like the trunks, that makes him slightly better. But even without him, he has a little bit of damage reduction. He has really high defense uh, guarding and he can stun. And then of course the MVP is the STR Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta. One of the best tanks in the game when it comes to shorter events because he can only tank for, is it 10 turns after his EZA? Uh, and he has a 50% chance to stun. Um, but for newer units, obviously this Goku and then the Gotenks, they were not out when I did the run. And obviously Gotenks, on turn 3 when he transforms into Super Saiyan, uh, he has a 70% chance to stun. So obviously in Super Battle Road, stunning is incredibly useful, so that is going to be really good. And then of course this Goku uh, is a really solid unit overall. Um, it can be difficult to get him to transform into Super Saiyan 3 in Super Battle Road because you have to have one enemy left and they have to be on a certain amount of HP. But if you can get that to go off, then obviously once he goes Super Saiyan 3, he has that built-in potential to dodge if you pick up enough orbs, as well as them being super effective against all types. The only problem with running him on the team is before he transforms into Super Saiyan 3, he doesn't have over and a flash, and the same can be said for the Gotenks. Um, so he will link up well with units like Bardock, who has prepared for battle and over in a flash. But pre-transformation, he can be a little bit awkward uh, in terms of key. Um, but yeah, they are some big hitters. Even units like this uh, transforming Goku, because in the early stages he raises defense when he super attacks. I think on my no items run, I actually used him as well and just used him as like a third slot unit. Because as long as he, as long as he gets a super off, and isn't taking a super himself or getting hit with type disadvantage, he can actually tank reasonably well as well. So there you go. I know that was probably not as much of a serious question because I know there's not a lot of people out there trying to know items the stages, but hey, it was a question that got asked. There's my answer. The link to the video for the run will be in the description. And uh, yeah, feel free to check that out. Okay, and so the final question today comes from someone on Twitter. I can't read the kanji, but their at is Mitch Hennessy Z. So I'm going to assume that the kanji is probably Mitch Hennessy. But he asks, Extreme Tech ESBR feels impossible. Any tips for beating it without Raditz and Broly? So I knew I had to include this question because it does come up a lot. Extreme Tech is probably one of the hardest stages, especially because... It does require some specific units in order for it to become like significantly easier. And if you don't have them, then obviously it's going to be quite difficult. So let's get the wiki up for extreme tech here and have a look. So obviously what you want to do, it can be useful to bring a Broly friend because... You know, for Super Battle Road, in terms of sheer damage output and clearing out the enemies as quickly as possible, I don't think really any other extreme tech unit matches up to the power of the LR Broly. Maybe like the Super Saiyan 3, if you pick up a ton of orbs, but then obviously he has no defense. Uh, the one thing to be careful, of course, is he doesn't get defense until he supers. And even then, with no item active, he still takes a lot of damage. So if you don't have Raditz and Broly... Uh, Tech Golden Freezer is like the next most important unit on the team, right? As long as you can maintain above 50% HP with your items, um, he will tank 
reasonably well. I, like, it's crazy how Extreme Super Battle Road, how hard the enemies hit, because even normal attacks will still do a few thousand, and then a super will do like 30 or 40,000 to Golden Freezer. This is without an item active, of course. Um, so, you know, gone are the days where you can just bring him into Super Battle Road and he takes double digit damage. Um, the Tech Boo has potential because of some of his abilities, but unfortunately for me, I don't have him, so I can't really speak too much to my experience of using him in Super Battle Road, but he doesn't have a lot of defense. He kind of suffers from that same thing as Zamasu, where he has damage reduction, but not a lot of defense. So in something like Super Battle Road, uh, he can get hit incredibly hard. Uh, Super Saiyan 3 Broly, um, whilst it is kind of a meme that even after his easy A he's not very good, especially because of his defense, he can actually be useful, uh, especially because he does have the highest leader skill for extreme tech that we can actually use on global, because it's giving 130 to everyone as opposed to specific categories. Um, the only thing with him, you just got to be careful that on a turn where he's going to take attacks, you either have to deliberately not pick up many orbs, or you just have to make sure that that's the turn where you use a very good defensive item. But, you know, a lot of Super Battle Road is RNG. And if you can get a run where Super Saiyan 3 Broly barely ever has to take any hits, you can just go ham and pick up as many orbs as you want. And he will hit incredibly hard, which will be very useful. Especially if uh, you can get a turn where you get the Dokkan attack with him, get a whole bunch of orbs, Ghost Dush of that turn, and he could completely take out that fight because he can hit incredibly hard in the right circumstances. He's just a liability defensively. So next up we have the Mars Saiyan, my boy. So after his recent EZA, he has become a lot better for Super Battle Road, but he's not become like a game changer, you know, going to make extreme tech super easy kind of unit. But he is good. Uh, he lowers his uh, uh, the enemy's attack when he supers, which is super useful for Super Battle Road. Uh, he does now raise attack and defense with each super, so if you've built him with a lot of additional, uh, if you double super, then he's not going to take as much damage. Um, he does also hit pretty hard, to be fair. Um, and then, of course, if you are going to run an uh, LR Broly friend, or you're bringing Super Saiyan 3 Broly, he does provide some good links for them in order to get a decent amount of ki. Uh, LR Black and Zamasu, they're kind of outdated now. Unfortunately, on ESPR, especially with no items, they will get kind of destroyed they do heal at the start of each turn which is very useful um same for the tech freezer so starting out his defense is not going to be very good but as he transforms he gets a lot more powerful and he does heal you at the start of the turn tech cell is another one where unfortunately without an item active even if you pick up a lot of orbs because he does have that nuking star passive he will still take quite a bit of damage but he does recover a lot of hp with each super so if you can get a turn where he double supers, he can give you a considerable amount of healing. So they are all very top units to pick. Obviously, if you somehow have the 50% support cell, I know a lot of newer players are not going to have him. The problem is with all the 50% supports, pretty much, if you only have one copy of them, so they're at 55%, they take a lot of damage in Extreme Super Battle Road. But obviously, they are very useful for the buffs they can provide to the team. And then Toa's kind of in the same boat, where because she's only come back into the summon pool fairly recently, a lot of people are not necessarily going to have her. But on a full Extreme Tech team, she's providing 35% attack and defense to everybody, as well as sealing the enemy, which is super useful for Super Battle Road. But her own defense is bad. Like with no item active, she will easily take close to 100k damage from attacks, which is obviously not what you want. So there are options for units that you can use that will make it a little bit easier. Uh, Tech Margin Vegeta is another one. His AoE, if you get lucky and get multiple stuns, he can be really good. Uh, Buff Boo is pretty decent, but his defense is not great. Uh, Demon King Piccolo, depending on the amount of uh, dupes you have in him based on how much you play World Tournament, he's really, really good. Two of the possible fights in Extreme Super Battle Road are the ones where he can transform on turn one. So he can be very, very good as well. Um, and even like Prime Battle Cell, he can be reasonably good. Uh, the free-to-play slug, he at least has the chance to stun and is an easy A unit, but honestly is not very good. So, unfortunately for Extreme Tech, a lot of the units are either good in ESBR, which is only a handful, and then the rest are kind of like, alright if you get good RNG, or just not very good. So, Extreme Tech definitely is the hardest one, but those are some options for units that can hopefully make it a little bit easier for you. 
Okay, so that is going to do it for today's episode. Shout out to everybody who sent in their questions. If you didn't get your question answered in this episode, I do apologize. Uh, feel free to resubmit it next week ready for the next episode. I will try and get to ones that I recognize from having been missed before. But yeah, hopefully that helps you guys out. And uh, I look forward to seeing your questions for the next episode. So that is going to be it for the video, guys. This has been The Master Ningen. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out the links down below for my Discord and the merch store. And I will see you all again soon. Have a good one.